Images of last night's moon in all its glory. Yeah, not only was it a lunar eclipse, it was also a super blood moon. And to learn more about this beautiful phenomenon, we send ABC 10 News reporter Jared Ahrens to the San Diego Air and Space Museum. Jared, as you know, it was kind of hard to get the full experience for a lot of people here in San Diego because it was a little cloudy. Yeah, a little cloudy last night where I was living. I was able to sneak outside just a little after my bedtime and got a good view of the moon as it started to disappear. But if you want to learn more about it, the best place to come is right here in San Diego, the Air and Space Museum. And David Neville with the museum is here with us right now. David, let's start by telling us a little bit about that eclipse last night and how it happened. So what was really neat is when you see a lunar eclipse, it means that the Earth is between the sun and the moon. And the moon, uh, is full, we see it full probably every 29 and a half days, right? About once a month. Mm -hmm. And a total eclipse, like we saw last night when the moon goes into the umbra, directly into the Earth's shadow, only happens two to three times a year. So it was, it was a really neat event last night. And like you said, there was a little cloud cover. I did get to see it when it was coming out of the eclipse All right. a little bit, but it, usually it's about a four hour event. And the one hour that it's directly behind us is when you see it, and you see the light, the corona from around the Earth, the red and orange light that hits the moon, makes the moon look red, whereas the blue and the green light that's coming off the Earth gets kind of diffused away from it's, the atmosphere. And it's such a cool thing to see, and now we know all about why, but you have this exhibit here at the museum about Galileo, and he was really one of the first to start to discover some of the science behind it. He was trying to tell the world that the Earth was not the center of the universe. Other people had talked about it, but he was really the one that tried to spread the word. He was trying to tell everybody that the Earth and other planets go around the sun mm -hmm. and that the moon goes around the Earth. And he was able to kind of prove that a little bit with a very simple telescope that someone else had designed, but he improved it and made it a lot better. He was actually able to see craters and mountains on the moon that helped, you know, prove this theory that they, hey, this is revolving around the Earth as opposed to the other way around. So much great science here at the museum, and obviously this is something that lots of people, anyone can come and, and visit, not just out here about Galileo, but inside some of the moon exhibits that we're going to go and look at in the next half hour. David's going to be our guide and show you how we have explored the moon and your way to kind of get up close and personal with some of the moon's greatest hits, if you will. Uh, that's coming up in about 30 minutes live at Balboa Park. Jared Ahrens, ABC 10 News. Uh, Jared, it seems like you're geeking out a little. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah, Just this stuff little. is so cool. We were inside with the moon exhibit earlier, uh, looking at some of the lunar landing modules, looking at some of the artifacts from the astronauts, and uh, I'm having a blast. I'm like a kid in a candy store right now. <laughs> were you showing in the tease? It looked like you were talking about some actual moon rocks that are there. Are they uh, actually there at the museum? They have one actual moon rock that you can come and see. It's the one I just showed you guys a little bit before. I'll show it to you again in a little while. Cool. All right. We'll check back with you in a little bit here, Jared. Thank you so much. I don't blame him.